Now, your pick for worst film of the decade is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, which came out in 2003. And I have to say, I had successfully completely ignored the film. I did see the prequel, uh, weirdly. I saw the prequel, but not the actual remake. And uh, when you put it on your list, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Now I have to go and watch this. So I actually just watched it. So uh, it's fresh in my mind. So, but first, before I prattle on with my pontifications, why do you rate this as the worst film of the decade? There are a couple of major reasons why. Number one, it was the first wave of the... I mean, there were films like The Ring that came before, but this was the first of the remakes of... American horror films from the 70s and 80s that were coming along. And it was the first one that was pr uh, produced by Platinum Dunes, the company that also produced the Friday the 13th and the Amityville Horror remakes. And it, for me, set the tone for this whole wave of remakes that we've been suffering through. And in and of itself, it's not scary. It's ridiculously over-designed. It's over-designed to the point where it was just like, who thought... No, I don't believe in any of this. I mean, this is irrespective of its connection to the original film. As itself, it, it was so insultingly derivative and stupid and, and full of the most inane dialogue and some a very, I thought, really offensive elements that I, I didn't understand what they, that were just put in to show off. As I look at what we can do, look at what we can do, it had no sense of style, it had no sense of anything whatsoever in terms of what makes a horror movie work. You know, we were talking about The Descent having atmosphere. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is so... Re the production design of that movie I gave an F to in my mind because it's it's so self-conscious. It's like, look, this this look at all the dripping water and the and the all the the the, the jars of organs lying around and look at the you know, it, it was a film that for me set the tone for so many crappy films. And the fact that it was successful gave rise to films that in some ways were even worse than it. But this was the first one that really I just walked out of going. This is the future of horror. Get me the hell out of here. And uh, this is the future of filmmaking. I mean, this was my worst film of all films. Wow. You know, you can, comedy, whatever, I don't care. Because it, it's more about, not only was it in and of itself a shitty movie, but it, it, it allowed a lot of other shitty films to come out as a result of that. If this movie had bombed, I, we never would have seen a Friday the 13th remake. We never would be, you know, there's the Amityville Horror, Prom, now all these other ones. It gave rise to a horde of, of, of unseemly nightmares that, quite frankly, I wish that, that inflicted, that were inflicted upon us during the uh, the, the knots that I, I really wish we hadn't. And it's uh, it's just a piss-poor movie in its own right. I mean, it, it's insultingly stupid, and it's not the least bit scary. Its connection to the original doesn't really bother me that much, because we already had three other sequels to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so it wasn't the idea of seeing another Leatherface really wasn't offensive to me. It's like, all right, you want to do another Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Fine, but good Lord. I mean, it was just... <laughs> so you, you're saying you didn't like it, essentially. Yeah, um, I, I had issues. I got to say, I was expecting much worse. And I know that some people actually like this remake, believe it or not. I had no interest in it, because for me, the crime with this movie is that it exists to begin with. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the great masterpieces of horror. Probably was a bit of an accident. It was a lot of elements combined and just a lightning in a bottle scenario. I don't think there's any one creative individual who can claim real ownership as to why Texas Chainsaw, the original, is so utterly nightmarish and disturbing. They didn't even realize the power of the film when they were making it. You know, uh, Toby Hooper thought he was making a comedy, for Christ's sakes. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of films are like that. And Chainsaw yeah. was like that. I think Night of the Living Dead was like that. Exactly. It's one of those films that transcends its own ambitions and becomes something greater than the sum of its parts, basically. You don't remake those films, okay? Like, artistically, you don't remake them. So, right off the bat, I had no interest in it. So I watched it, 
and I evaluated it on its own terms. Now, if you're aware of the original, it's impossible not to watch this movie. Oh, sure, without, that's very difficult to do. Yeah, without thinking about how it's just riffing on the original. So it becomes this absurd, very non-gratifying exercise in, oh, so they've taken that plot point and they've tried to twist it this way. And while I agree with you that it's over-designed, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's like a music video. Daniel Pale, who shot the first one, was yeah. the DP on this. I actually think it's quite beautiful if you accept it as this overproduced exercise i mean the, the yeah I, I had problems fantastic. though with it because uh, i mean i mean yeah there are some very individual i mean but you can tell daniel pearl became the king of music videos after his time on the original film uh i mean he he was one of the most influential dps in music video history everything from michael jackson's billy jean to i mean you know every i mean he was that became his thing and when he re-entered cinema with this it felt like he was posing. I, I didn't feel any real. I didn't feel like everything was so artfully composed and so to. I mean, just to a T. It just took me right out of the film. And there was one shot in particular at the very beginning of the film where a character blows her brains out, and the character and the camera pulls back through her head through the the hole in the back of the truck, and all the characters are screaming bloody murder through the hole in her head that I thought was both offensive to what was supposed to have been a sympathetic character and also mind-bendingly stupid because it requires all the characters to sit there like idiots going, ah, when in reality they would be getting the hell out of that truck, you know, hightailing it down the highway. And I'm just like, okay, if the, who's ever, whoever's idea was this should be shot. You know, it's like, come on, guys. You know, really, is this the best you can come up with? And, it, I, you know, so, I mean, yeah, artistically speaking, there are some very nice shots that he comes up with, but it all felt arch and it all felt stylized to the point of death. It really did. The best part, though, is Jessica Biel tripping around in hip-hugging jeans, a bare midriff, and that tight white tank top. Yeah, with a bra underneath. What girl in the 70s wore a bra? The biggest problem that the movie has is in its reconfiguration of the Leatherface character. In order to make this character scary, their idea is to, first of all, make him as ridiculously, over, you know, even the the mask is, is, is laughably dumb because it has eyebrows and it has like deep black pocket. It's an evil looking mask. It's like, you know, it's not enough that the guy's six foot five, runs around with a chainsaw, has a big bloody apron, he's going to hack you up for barbecue. No, 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 that's not scary enough. The, the mask has to look mean. And it's just, it's, it's dumb, and the character doesn't have any, ask, he's just a standard issue boogeyman. But they're going to give you a backstory throughout the film. It's like, oh, he was... He had that skin condition as a child, and he was wronged, and it's like, okay, so you're trying to humanize this guy, but you're not presenting any side to him other than this weird boogeyman guy. That it just it doesn't work. It doesn't work whatsoever. The movie doesn't understand a thing about Leatherface. If you want to understand Leatherface, watch the original. And I hate to directly compare it, but they're asking me to. Oh, yeah. Leatherface I mean, in the original, the mask has no character. It's a blank slate. I think of all the sort of masked slasher icons, with the exception of Robert Englund doing Freddy, Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface, that is a real performance. I, I would say he's the Hamlet of slasher icons and it's also held by the fact another huge i mean asset to him was the fact that he was existing in a world that was created by director toby hooper and the production designer robert burns that felt real it felt like something that could exist when she stumbles into that room with the bones, you felt it. You felt like this was a place that someone was living and actually doing these things. I never felt that for one second in the remake. I felt like the production designer was literally standing behind the camera masturbating, going, oh, yes, it is so disgusting and so evil. I mean, it was just like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This, there's nothing about this. And it's so idiotic. It, it's just, it, you know. Was the, that Harry, hang on, was that Harry Knowles's head? Yes, it was. Okay, I thought so. And uh, I'll tell you what is scary, okay, about Leatherface in the remake. 
is if you ever meet Andrew Brynyarski, the guy who plays Leatherface, at a convention. <laughs> That's frightening. <laughs> I'm going to say no comment on that because uh, I could tell you stories, but good lord. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, the difference between those two guys, between Gunnar Hansen and Andrew, is well, if you've ever met the both of them, you know. Uh, it, it, it's just, for me, the Chainsaw remake, it's just, it takes every opportunity and squanders it. It's it's a whole, I mean, you got Arlie Ermey in there, and he's fun to watch, but he's Arlie Ermey's greatest hits in that movie. Oh, it's even worse in the prequel, though. Did you see the prequel? I like the prequel more. Oh, my God. Not, which is not saying much. No. I liked no, it more, no. except for the ending, which is one of the most ridiculous moments in movie history. But, I, yeah, I mean, but again, it's just like, I don't understand the point. The whole thing just seems like a big wank-off exercise. I have a question, though, and hopefully you have some insight into this. While I thought, you know, Daniel Pill's cinematography was very masterful and very good, all that dusty light and everything, I hated the monochromatic palette of the color timing, which has become a sort of ubiquitous trademark of uh, horror films over the past decade. And I was wondering, where did that start? Did it start with this? Did it start with Saw? Like, oh, Saw, begin? as I recall, was the first time I remember seeing that sort of, yeah, that sort of not black and white, but all, but almost kind of black and white. Um, or if like overly green or overly bread or overly brown. But I remember that one, and yeah, this one, they almost kind of were back-to-back. It's the worst thing about horror films of the past decade for me. Or one of the worst things is that monochromatic palette. I find it so tedious, and it doesn't create for me a a sense of dread or foreboding. It it just makes the films joyless and and Uh, dreary to watch. I mean, there's a point to it if you're trying to really bring in some atmosphere, but it all seems like a put-on in this movie. For me, the movie's supposed to be taking place in the 1970s, but then you have this ultra-new-wave, stylized look to it, so it completely ruins any kind of actual uh, atmosphere they're going for as far as the time and place. And like I said, the whole movie is just played as this romp, almost. And it's funny, if you watch the DVD... There's a great documentary that was done by Automat Pictures called uh, Chainsaw Redux, I think it's called. That's the making of the movie. And it's very, very good because you see that a lot of the people involved with it were aware of the fact that no one, there were a lot of people, a lot of animus against this going in. They were like, we really want to, we really want to pay tribute to the original but bring in something new. Their intentions were all really good, but then they utterly missed the point. And it's 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 a fascinating watch because you can see that like oh they're trying but they just don't they don't have a clue and the fact that they would hire the director of this to bring in the Friday the Thirteenth remake as well just goes to show that they really weren't paying attention. Uh, it's like well, he didn't get it right the first time. Okay, I made money, but he didn't get it right the first time. Why would you give him a second shot at blowing it again? And he did. <laughs> and so I I just for me the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake was everything that was wrong with horror and filmmaking in the knots. Maybe not the worst of the bunch. I'm sure you could find some ones that were technically worse. But it's it was the one that whose success allowed for a lot of those other ones to happen. And you know what? Fuck it. I got better things to do with my time than to suffer through any more of those. So that, that one really pissed me off. 